Hey everybody, Mark Hanna, Hothead Thundermouth here, coming to you once again, unscripted, uncensored, unapologetic, and psychologically immune from social media scoring, here today to answer the question, the age-old question, sea lion, would it be a sea lion, or would it be a sea kitten, when the Germans invaded England? This video will attempt to answer that using Axis Empires as a venue, continuing the series that's been going on for some time now. It's about 7 o'clock in the morning. I've been up for the last two or three hours getting this done. Took a long time to do this one. These summer turns take a while. Anyway, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, without further ado, let me bring it to you. Thanks for watching. Okay, here we are, guys. We have Super Steady on. So we're going to see how this looks after I film it. I just wanted to zoom in prior to getting started on our May-June turn. Um, here's what's coming in. And what we need to do is see how many air units do I need for these critical areas. I want to take in my first turn of 42, summer 42, I want to take Lisbon. Do I need an air unit for that? The answer is no, I should not need an air unit. Um, and I'll explain all of that later. The next one is, okay, Athens. Will I need an air unit? Probably not. There's an outside chance that I'll get some bad results and not succeed. Okay, you, you never know. But I think if we get more than average luck, we should succeed. Over here, the next objective hex as we've been talking about, is Baghdad. And here they are. Uh, they just don't have enough forces. They would need an air unit. Okay, but I'm really trying to save all of my... I have a lot of air units down here. I could put a couple down here. Um, probably more than I need, really. Uh, the British have one air unit, and I've got three because I'm serious about this. Um, then up here, I'll get two more air units. I've got in the French sector, one, two, three, four, five. They've got five, and I'm gonna get two more. I don't have, I only have one in the Spanish sector. So what I'm gonna try to do is focus my efforts, not this turn on Britain, but I'm gonna put another offensive marker and try to take out Poland. So I will use some air there to make sure that they can't uh, stack up any more units there. Okay, but this is not going to be an easy attack to pull off. So we're going to have to work a little hard to get through there on this one. Okay, the idea though is to take out Poland in one turn. Maybe I can get... I don't think I can get Vichy France, but I'm going to pin it down to maybe just Marseille and maybe just maybe be able to take out uh, Casablanca too. So these are the main objectives. We'll get started on the turn next. Just wanted to try this steady hand mode. Thank you. All right, folks. Hello. Starting the 1942 summer turn, May, June. And the first thing we have are these things coming out of the, well, what shall we say here? They're not coming, coming off the turn track. Uh, also, we have the Graf Spey is also coming in off of the construction box. So there's the German carrier that came in and put that with the fleet. Just in the nick of time, isn't it? Well, we will see if that actually makes any difference. Okay, so uh, these French uh, fleets, uh, we have to deploy these now. And the French fleets can't go, they don't have to go to Marseille like I was thinking. Um, in fact, it's pretty much landlocked. They can't actually trace a fleet unit path there. That's not even a valid port for them. So any off-map box will work for them, any fleet. What I'm going to do is put one of each of these fleet, uh, well, battleships. We'll put them in two of the British fleets. Okay. 
We'll put them over here. That way they can come out and fight uh, like the other ones will. Put the stronger one in the uh, number four fleet here. This cruiser, we'll put it over in the eastern U.S. box. Really, these ships are only going to be used as, you know, you can only supplement a minor country with one. Uh, let me rephrase that. If you form up a fleet with a major power, you can only add one ship from a different country to that task force. So the French ships will be used sort of like they were used at the end of World War II. You know, one battleship coming in to help bombard Normandy, for example. Okay. We'll put the Revenge in the slower fleet up at Scapa Flow. And the Interceptor and the Air Force, these guys come in on their respective force pools there. And the 443, a welcome sight for the Germans. Those are rare. We need more of those. I got two of them in the force pool now. I'm about to get some more, though. So let's get going with the operational card. We have a lot to do here with Operation Sea Land. Let's zoom in on this so you can see what it's doing. And here we go. Okay. Very exciting for the Germans here. So, card five has been played. It's not a two yet. We didn't do a two command card last time. It was only a one blitz card. So, well, Operation Felix was a complete disaster for the Axis. Let's hope this one's better. You've already seen my preamble about trying to secure some of these extra objective hexes in the first turn of summer. And we're going to be able to then redeploy the Italian fleet up here to operate in the English Channel by making this an Italian base. You don't see what I'm pointing at yet. Here we go. This put an Italian expeditionary unit. We'll move up from here when it's built. Then I can make that a base for the Italian fleet. Okay. Eventually, I'll probably move that base over here to Brest, but I can't get there in one turn. But I want to be able to start using that Italian fleet to threaten the British as well. Should be pretty exciting as we go forward with this. So, let us see what's next. Going back to the card. All right, zooming in on this card. So we've got to do a few functional things. Um... Remove card 23A, Operation Barbarossa from the deck. All right. Okay. Did I already do that? Yep, there it is. Removing it. Okay. Select one neutral minor country and apply Declare War. Uh, well, I actually don't have to do that because Total War will be in effect. But... Um, Actually, Total War is now in effect. 12.3 is the next bullet point right after that. So let's make sure. I think that puts us at war with Poland without declaring war on Poland. Okay, so a number, number of things have happened here. Uh, due to the play of this card, uh, these are the things that are coming in on the force pool. These are coming in as delays. Uh, the Pacific Limited War marker was removed. As were the Nazi Soviet pack markers, that puts us at war with both the miners of Russia, which is Poland, and Poland itself. Um, I didn't actually move any Russians into Poland. I guess I could have, but I didn't. Hmm. Probably a strategic mistake. Ha <laughs> ha ha. Oh well. The Germans need a little help in this game anyway. All right, so. There's a new war marker up on the turn track. You will see here. Next season it comes in, and that could go against the British already. So probably the British are going to want to play their um, card 23 while they can, so they can get some stuff from the Far East uh, next turn. It's not the optimal play, probably, but... Um, 
It might be a play that they'll want to do. I don't know. That's a very good question. Uh, so then you'll also see at the very top, that's when the United States comes in in 1943. And victory in Europe day is delayed by a year. It's going to be in 46. So that's the interesting stuff that's going on around here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get this stuff deployed and see what's next. Because the other thing I also get are six armor and 12 infantry steps. So I need to get those. I need to decide if I want to get an airborne unit again. Uh, I think it's still in the delay box, isn't it? Maybe not. All right, I'll check out all of that and get it all deployed. One last final thing, we had to select a card, Operation Typhoon. So that's going to be the next one. That gives us a blitz in the uh, fall turn. And this is a historical play, more or less. I suppose you could say there's nothing historical going on. The Fortunes of War cards were a little bit weird that got pulled. I got Super Heavy Artillery, which is really useful against true forts, but it's not so useful against port forts although you can uh, reduce and get rid of the defender shift if you're lucky. Uh, these are really nerfed down, I think. these This Fortune of War card, major effect, it's hard to roll. Could roll a five or six for no effect. And the British card, or the German, Russian, sorry, the Russian card, or British card, Mass Surrender, um, might be useful if there's sort of a Stalingrad situation where you want to get rid of some units behind you, not let them attack. Or if I can isolate some units in Britain, make them surrender and get them out of my hair. So that's good. I also still have the good battle card for air and naval combat. Um, this is really only good if ships are involved. So we haven't had a chance to use that, but I have a feeling we will. <laughs> okay, let's get this to play. All right, so we start off with the usual sub patrols. Let's see what these subs can do. Ooh, out in the North Atlantic, trying to get some stuff. Got a green die and a white die, a two and a five. So we check our, should have this memorized by now, shouldn't I? Check the sub patrol table and what we find is that the two I can attack a slow speed carrier and a CA or a CD so let's pick our victims out I've gotten rid of all of the slow carriers so now I've got the courageous out there and a fast CA so here's the shot on the courageous ho <laughs> ho well doesn't look good Two sixes on that. Here's the two damage rolls. Total of six damage and another British carrier is sunk. Well, they're losing a lot. I'm not so sure these things are supposed to be this powerful. All right, and here, so there's the new subs. And now these two subs attack the York. And I got a disabled result. So those both go in the Naval Warfare delay box. Okay. Not too bad. Now we also have a base attack. I've got these bombers coming in. Let's see what we get for the base attack. We've got, uh, let's see, one or a two is what they want. And it's a six. Terrible. Raiders discovered. 10 10. Mm. 10 10. Well, the Brits are just making things difficult. Let's look up rule 10-10. And Schiffskrieg 10-10 tells us. I don't think it's going to be good. 10.10. Uh, Raiders discovered. The facing faction must select an Air Force bomber or CV support unit in its force pool and place it in the delay box. Ha! Okay. Um, so I'm going to have to put... Uh, all right. The non-phasing player may immediately form an interceptor task force. 
to fight the ship or LBA in the Raid Task Force. These special rules apply to this task force. Air Naval Combat between the Raid Task Force and the Interceptor Task Force is conducted normally. Uh, so do I want to... Uh, intercepting... So I could try to fight a combat against that, but it's going to be placed in the use box. So I think I've done enough. I don't have enough British air. So we used asset box for that. And a dental lay box. What air unit? I can't believe what's happening to the Germans with this stuff. It's just terrible, isn't it? Okay, so now we place our other support units and see what happens. Yeah, this late sea lion is looking harder and harder with these bad results that I have. I've lost a delay on just a raid, and I also... So that was an Air Force in the delay box. I had Operation Felix backfire on me, so that was another Air Force. It's really ruining my day when it comes to uh, trying to take out these guys. <laughs> All right, so all I'm doing then is putting an Air Force over here. I had to put a 447 in Frankfurt to populate that, uh, one of the new ones. So he's in the used asset box, placed right here to do these attacks um, here and here. So uh, let's go ahead and we will now, uh, the, that's done at this point. This is the, oh, what's the name of the phase? Support segment. So now we got to organize our troops. We're going to do that now as the Germans. Sorry, I didn't realize I had an Air Force underneath these Berlin guys. Those are the guys that populated the Air Force for the Polish attack. Um, keep losing my support units as the Germans. It messes up my incredibly detailed and accurate planning, which this game will do to you. Okay, so we're not going to do that. We've done all the rest of the moves. Let's bring these guys down here. We need to get rid of these French units. I can only bring a... No, I can't build them up. I'm gonna have to keep them separated out. I'm just gonna have to come down and do it the hard way. Four to one, three to one, and I do not want to commit this armored unit to that. So I got this armored unit to go there. This armored unit will come around the side, one, two, three, four. And this one will take over to lose. And uh, we'll, look, we'll do it like that. Okay. Uh, all right, that's all the machinations I'm doing in Vichy, France. No invasion yet. And the Germans are really behind schedule because of some really bad luck. Um, oh well, so it goes. Okay, so those are the attacks now. Let's go ahead and take care of them one by one. Starting with the blitz attack here. Let's zoom in. Right, so we're blitzing, so we have get a shift for the Marine across the channel here. An armor, so that's uh, th uh, 14, 15, 16, 17, it looks like. 17 to 4, so it's a 4 to 1. I've got two shifts, so it'll be a 6 to 1 attack on Portugal, on Madrid. All right. So let's do that. Six to one is usually pretty good. Let's see what they can pull off here. Six to one attack. Bam. Four, Four sounds all right. Let's see. Four on the six to one. Yeah, DR2 and they lose a step. So that's all three steps that are in there. This has to rebase to a suitable port. It'll go up here to England. It's on the same uh, C zone. They can put it up here in, uh, yeah, 
Let's go. This goes to the delay box. And boom. That's the end of Portugal. It will become a conquered state after this. Off to a good start, the BEF with a stripe on it. Then must go here into the delay box. Let's march in here. Where do I get these? I don't know where I want to get these, but they certainly don't want to be here, so they're not going to advance in. This guy could advance in. But yeah, he'll advance in. And one of the, these guys, two of these guys will advance in. Okay. There we go. Okay. Um, more Blitz combat. Let's go to uh, Athens now. All right, let's, uh, well, since we got our focus on here, let's do this. So I do want to have them retreat out so I can take that hex. So we'll do the four to one here. I've got 15 to five with two shifts, but they got to shift back. And I don't have an HQ over there to help me improve the odds. So here's the roll. A two. Well, that's good with that with that roll. Uh, that's gonna force them to retreat two hexes because they can't stay in there. One, two. So they'll have to retreat out. That lets me exploit in. One, two. Now let's see. 8 plus 8 is 16. And I need a little bit more. Yeah, we'll send them all in. No, I don't think I will. No, I will. Uh, no, I won't. Can I just do it with a 6? Let's see. 6 plus 8, 14. To two, it says six to one. A shift on each. I think a six to one is guaranteed to do two steps. Yes. So we'll just do the six to one. That's very fortunate. And this guy can exploit in. And, uh, hmm, I don't know. Stay right there, I think, just to see. Maybe he'll go there, because I might want to reserve move to Lvov or something. We'll see what I want to do. Okay. Maybe it's not as bad as I thought, now that I want that battle nicely. Okay. Then we'll move down to the Madrid attack. Madrid attack here. Hopefully everybody can see this. Let's zoom in. There we are. So I think I've calculated this out before. I've got 16 to 4. It's a 4 to 1. Um, with a 2 shifts to the 1 shift. So it's a 6 to 1 on Madrid. <laughs> Not Madrid. 6 to 1 on Athens. And Athens hmm, decides to hold out. Takes some major damage, but DR1 and two hits. Now they have to take the DR1 and then the two hits. And the uh, Germans will lose their armor. Okay, because they have to. But that's okay. That's going to get me the Italians, these Expeditionary Corps to there, which is really what I wanted. And along with. Hmm. I don't think I want any more there. I'm going to spread these guys out. They have other places to go. So that's it. Good news there. That should be all the, the normal... Sorry, blitz attacks. Now we got normal attacks going back up to Poland. We calculated this as a 6 to 1. 
Uh, there's a shift for the city, but also a shift for the air unit. So that's a 6 to 1. Oh, I think I forgot. No, I didn't. I didn't forget my air unit. Okay, so that's a 6 to 1. Here we go. And it's a 4. 4 is good enough. This gives us a DR2 and 1. That's two steps. And in we go. These guys didn't participate, so they can't advance. But they can. And they will. All right. So that's a Polish unit dead. And then we have this surrounding attack. One, two, three, seven. Six to one, uh, but they got a shift. So it's a four to one using the famous yellow die. Oh, it was a good roll, a two. So, yep, that's eliminated. And the Poles succumbed easily to the German threats. So at least those attacks went well for the Germans. We also have a regular attack down here in North Africa. I had to put one of my precious, where is it? There we are. I had to put a precious 443 in this attack. Now that's gonna go down to a three to one because it's a city. So, three to one. Casablanca. Ooh, well, that's an exchange, but that's what we need. That will be destroyed. I suppose it can retreat. Um, they might retreat it. Yeah, why not? Just to be a nuisance. Um, the Germans have to take the exchange first, then the other side decides if they want to take an exchange or a retreat. So, yeah, they'll retreat. Although if the Germans had moved here, they wouldn't have been able to retreat. So we'll play that, play it that way. This goes to the delay box. This is in the delay box. And we will put a one, two, two in Casablanca. So the Germans have achieved their objectives. They took Lisbon. They took Athens. They're setting up in Iraq and they took uh, Poland. So we'll do the reserve movement phase now. I did forget one attack. I had a three to one, these guys were surrounded after I remembered I should move here. So three to one, but I rolled a four, which is a one, one and a DR. So the Germans take a step and they advance in to Lyon. All right, I'll keep one guy here and these guys go to the delay box. So, yep, taking some hits over here, but nothing in a crucial way. Okay, continuing on with the reserve movement. Okay, so we finished the reserve movement. We got into the conditional events. We've now conquered Poland, Portugal, and Greece all on the same turn. So all of those then go into the here. All of the Greek units then are removed from the map. All the Polish units are removed from the map. And put, those are in the Soviet box. Okay, they've been liberated. I think that's a liberation. Or is it a conquest? It might be a liberation event. Let me just check for that. Uh, No, it's a conquest. It's a conquest. They don't have a liberation of the Soviet unit areas. That's only for the Western Allies. So that's a conquered country as well. Okay. Now, what they haven't done is made a move on England yet. But England's going to be making some moves to defend the North Sea. So... This should be interesting because the Germans did not commit their subs to the strategic warfare box. So now we're going to have a fight over here because what we want to do is try to close down these ports over here um, and see would it make sense to close down the ports. Um, I don't know. I think they can still place... Uh, uh, 
beachhead there. Um, hmm. I'll have to check that out. I need to check out and say, okay, so if I have a beachhead, uh, it probably won't be an open port. But who cares? I can still trace supply the normal way through there. So controlling the North Sea doesn't do much of anything other than prevent uh, some kind of invasion in some weird spot, which seems really unlikely that they would try. So maybe I won't be doing anything fancy. I'll probably do an air raid, though. See if I can take on these Italian navies here in Brussels. That should be interesting. So we'll probably wind up doing that. Okay. Uh, yep, I think that's it for the Germans then. Successful turn, other than that raid. If they had succeeded on that raid, they might have destroyed a 4-4 unit without having any retaliation. That would have been nice. However, such was not to be the case. That's really it for the Germans. I'll double check everything. And then I can move on to the Western Allies after this. Okay, I'm not sure how wise this is. Here in the middle of the wee hours, I'm getting up and can't sleep at the moment. I sometimes will wake up in the middle of the night, actually quite often, do something for a couple of hours, then go back to sleep. So, here we are, and it's the Western Turn. So their card that they picked, Western Military Aid, um... Pre-war, again, we were running low on cards. So, what are they going to do next time? I think I've decided, because the Pacific War has ended, Churchill Diplomacy is put back in the deck, so we'll do that right now. Uh, one of the things I wanted to do, this is one of the few times, um, I could put Lend Least Allies in, but this is one of the few times I'm going to be able to sneak in my Commonwealth support because the Western Pacific box is no war uh, all of a sudden <laughs> due to the advent of total war, but it might have become war again and a 50% chance when that marker comes in right here. Pacific Total War could go against the Western Allies again. 50% of the time it will. In Axis Empires, the complete game, that's not decided by such a manner. But um, here we don't have any choice. So even though I've got quite a few cards I could play, historically this would have been the next card played. I'm going to slide this one in, which normally would have been played earlier. So that's the choice for the Western Allies. Okay. So, that said, here's what Britain gets. They get a step. So let's take a look at the kind of steps they can get. Um, plus they can get a minor allied step. Vichy France comes to mind. Um, might be worth building up in North Africa here. I've got a choice. So that's the only ally I have left. The other ones have all been conquered this last turn by the Germans by in their turn. Um, I do have the South African unit, but I don't want to bring that in at this time because uh, of the Western military aid results. I could probably bring, get a colonial in anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and get this and the question is okay get this unit and get probably a 122 British unit in these will be our reinforcements and um, what am I going to do with them well I have a choice of Zoom back out here. Uh, we have Marseille. But there's certainly a lot of German units heading my way over here. One, two, you can build up a uh, army here. Three, four, five, six. Get a three to one on me here. Um, 
I think I have a better chance of surviving if I put it in North Africa here out of range. One, two, three. One, two, three. So in Iran, I also might be able to build up a decent sized army there if I get lucky. So we're going to go ahead and uh, put it there for the time being. And uh, the one tube two then comes in in England. I'll put it in Bristol to buffer up the defenses there. I also might send one of those units again to West Africa as the Axis has not decided to impede any naval movements through North Atlantic at this time. They're holding back for the big push probably next turn to try to invade England. Uh, I don't see how they can wait too much longer to do that. Okay, so that's that. Now we do the political segment. It's total war now, so we're done rolling for allied ships. What you see on the ship build, which is one more light carrier, a decent battleship, and then there's going to be some carriers coming in in 1945. For the end of the war, they won't have much of an impact. So the navies are pretty much established by this point. Okay. So Western military aid, we have a plus one for Axis Tide. That's still the current victory condition here. Uh, plus one. And I rolled a six, which is military aid. So with military aid, I can do a delay reduction up here. There's really not a lot of delay that I really want to do for reducing the Western allies here, so that's not going to happen. Um, I can get in a minor ally, another French unit, or I can get that South African unit in, and that's what we're going to do, since I rolled a six on that. The South African unit is placed in the West Africa box, which is down here. So it goes right here, and it's going to be sent to the East Africa box as I set up to try to take Egypt back, slowly but surely. Okay, so that's it. Support segment is next. Let's put these aside. So the British supports, what do they have in the support pool? Well, they've got a surface fleet, a CV fleet two air units and an interceptor. Um, they're pretty much maxed out. They would probably hold back and use the interceptor against a strategic warfare ploy by the Germans when they put their subunit out there. So uh, instead of putting anything out, the other way to, to utilize it is to close off some ports. But I remember I talked about this before and in the very old days of Krieg, if you controlled the North Sea, they wouldn't be allowed to place a unit there, but that's no longer the case. They can still place a unit in the sea box here and create the beachhead, even though it wouldn't be a supplied port, it wouldn't be an open port. They can get supplies right across from France, one, two, to the railheads. So, what will the Allies do? Well, I think the only thing they're going to do, they will try an air raid during the support phase. They have an available air marker that can be used, in a, so they'll use some Davlin bombers or something to try to bomb the Italian Navy and that Air Force in there. See if they can maybe get lucky and hit that. Other than that, I'm not going to try to block the North Sea and keep all my other support weapons. Support weapons. <laughs> Which game am I playing? Support units. Um, it's possible to place one on Baghdad, but I don't think I'd win that air battle. It could actually work out better for the Germans if they just destroy my 
small little 2.5 air unit there. And they got plenty of air to, to populate. So I've got too many air bases, uh, too many land-based air for the Germans compared to the British there. That's a consideration that you would not have in the regular game. And uh, it's just not worth the risk of the Germans getting an extra support unit by winning outright a successful air combat down there over Baghdad. So, yeah, they won't be placing anything. Let's go ahead and do the air raid roll. So a one or a two. They got a two. Okay. That means on the air raid chart, if you look at that, the air raid chart, I think we get one round of combat here. Um, so, yeah, they can go ahead and... Um, Take a stab at the German air unit or the fleet. I think I'll take a take a stab at their fleet. We'll go ahead and bomb some of these big battleships here that the Italians have. This is like the raid on Toronto, except with a real air unit. So those are the guys that will be attacked. One air factor each. Let's zoom in on that. Here they come. So just to be one air strike factor on each coming in. Let's see what happens. Blue, red, black. Okay, the red took a hit. No hits on those or disabled. So I've got a battleship with a defense of six. I rolled a four. Okay, so that's enough to damage it. That flips it over to the damaged side. So damaged units at this point we refer to the combat chart. These markers go to the line of battle, damage side up. Okay, so at the end, what happens to them? Is that on this chart? So as I thought, that goes into the naval war fair delay box. But since it's damaged, the amount of delay is going to be the number of seasons. So that was a successful... Air Raid, I think that's the first successful Air Raid we've had in this game. This goes into the Used Asset box. Okay. Well, the Italians are not happy about that. We sent our fleet all the way up here just to be bombed by the British. That's right. That's right. You guys need to pay the piper. Hmm. All right, so that's it. Let's see for... Any other actions by the Western Faction movement, reserve movement, and so on? Let me take care of that. Yeah, there's really nothing else that the Western Allies need to do. A very unsexy turn, one might say. But they did take out an Italian battleship for some time. So that's always a victory. Okay, that means we move over to the Russian side. Now, as I mentioned to you before, the Russians made a mistake here. They could have been occupying Poland with their actual regular army. However, I'm not so sure they actually wanted to do that. If they had done that, the Germans have a salient here to possibly cut off a lot of troops and make that very difficult for them. So I'm not so sure it was really that much of an error. I mean... They sacrificed Poland as a buffer state here, and that's gone. They haven't lost any Russian steps. So I'm not going to think that was necessarily a bad move for them to stay away from that trap, given that they didn't know what the Germans were necessarily going to do. I mean, it certainly looked like a sea lion adventure, but they did commit quite a few troops in up here. So... Uh, 
what's interesting here for the Germans is they really, now that they have six victory hexes total, since they've added Athens and Lisbon to their total, they need three more. One might be in Baghdad. They don't want to lose any of these. Okay. Um, also, while their fleet's messing around over here, um, it can't be being used to transport troops up to Finland. And I don't think there's any key ports that they own. The Germans don't have any key ports. That's not a key port. Uh, so, uh, the only key port, I think, is Leningrad right here. So, the Germans would have to use their troop convoy, not an Axis scratch convoy, to ship some Germans up to Finland to keep it in the war. So, I think one of the main war goals for Russia right now should be to defend here and press perhaps... Perhaps in Romania they can do some damage here to, to push them back out of Bessarabia. I'm looking down here now in this sector where the Germans have lined up here. You see a, a fair number of troops. Um, all this is a bit premature to discuss without seeing what their card is. The last time they had limited war production, that would go back into their deck. Okay. Um... And their new card was to demand Eastern Poland, which gives them only three steps, but it does give them a uh, option card segment, get another HQ, which is nice. So that goes in the delay box. Let's get this out. Russia's posture is packed when they played it. Okay. So in the political events segment, Russia's posture is not packed. Okay, so they will not get ceded land, okay? It's not Entente or Rapallo either, if you guys want to read along with that, so this won't apply. Um, if Russia's posture is war, and Eastern Poland belongs to a neutral minor country, which it does not, okay? You may apply country resists to that country, but it's not no, a neutral minor country anymore. So this card doesn't do anything actually for the Russians, except what they really wanted, which is to get another HQ. So let's get that out of the box for card 11. Let's say we got the three steps, try to set up to attack Finland. They don't really have a lot up there. They probably need to get an HQ that way. Um, but they can at least get started on occupying that area. Um, and I think this alleviates their requirement for a garrison. But the real problem that they have is they don't have any steps left to break down. They got a couple of steps in here they can break down. They don't really need these troops in, in the Persian sector. Um, although it might be wise to declare war on Persia, uh, actually these Russian troops might be useful down here in the Iraq sector, if not in the Turkish sector. So we might start heading them down that way to cause some problems. Hmm, interesting idea. All right. Let's take a look at this now. What card should we pick? Let me see. Yeah, card 17 is only required for Stalin orders attack, but the alternative to Stalin's orders attack um, is the Siberian reserves released. Um, but that requires a relocation of war industries. Um... So we have to decide if these production variations are going to matter um, 
for the Russians, but right now this is probably the best card for them to play. So we're going to do that. All right. So let's go ahead and do the Russian turn. They won't be placing any supports. They only have the interceptor at the moment. So an interceptor won't allow strategic bombing or air raids, air base attacks. So they won't be doing a base attack. I don't have the right kinds of uh, aircraft. Okay. So do they have a sub? No. There is no sub in here. They just got nothing. So let's just see what the Russians do for maneuvers. Okay, so the Russians have moved. You will see they've got some attacks. The first attack up here is on the Finnish units. I've got three, six, nine, eleven. So it's a nine to one. They got a shift for the river, but there's a shift for the HQ, so a staggering nine to one attack. And ooh. <laughs> There's no armor, but uh, DR3 and lose a step. So, no, they can go this way. One, two, three, and then lose a step. Finland might be taken over pretty quickly around this place. Okay. And they will be able to advance in to the hex like that. Hmm. Not looking good for the Finns. Not looking good at all. Over here, they're going to attack this German unit. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15 to 6, a 2 to 1 up to a three to one. Start these attacks. The roll is, oh one, they want, it's a DR2. So they go one, two, and they push in like that. Very nice. Pushing back the Germans here. Not what the Germans want to see so quickly. And then finally, on the southern border, they're attacking. Three, six, nine, twelve to two, six to one. But they got two shifts for river and mountain. But they got an HQ shift. So that's going to give them, sorry. 3, 6, 9, 12, 2. All right. So 6 to 1 down to a 4 to 1. With a 2. They're pushing them back everywhere you look. Two steps. Hmm. Not taking any uh, retreat, too. Sorry. 1, 2. They can advance in. I'm not taking any losses here. Uh, maybe I need to attack a little more aggressively next time. <laughs> I feel like I need to take some more losses. Okay, uh, reserve move. So that's it for the Russians. They've pushed uh, the Germans back in a couple areas. The Germans are going to have to deal with this. Onslaught. As the Russians come forward here, um, but nothing bad has really happened, although the Konigsberg push is a little worrying here. That's definitely not what I want to see in that sector. So I need to push back something at these guys. All right, so it's going to be delay rolls now. So we've got quite a few of these. And uh, I 
don't think I'm going to go through all of these. I'll just put them on the map. I'll roll them and put them on the chart. Notice any salient uh, results. Okay, the Axis uh, continue to get bad luck. The Italian sub <laughs> battleship won't come back until 1944 after being damaged by the air raid. The worst part is that the German air unit maxed out its roll and rolled a five. So they're not going to have that for uh, <laughs> Sea Lion. It's going to be a long fight, I think, uh, for control of the waters. We're going to see some serious action coming up, that's for sure. Okay, so that's the end of the delay rolls. Um, let's see what comes in for the next turn. Okay. Oh, here comes the Sir Hermes back. Ready to be sunk. <laughs> All right. Uh, the Germans get their troop convoy back. They need that. Um, they definitely need that. So we've got some a mixed bag of stuff coming in. We've got a free French, pretty nice free French unit coming in uh, to the uh, board. Let's take a look at this here more closely. Um, so Soviets get a couple of units. It's a better air unit that they can put up to the front. Put it there. Uh, let's see. And this goes in the force pool. They need a lot more troops. They need to start losing some troops. Maybe the Germans will help them out by killing a few. Let's put the Hermes in the deck over here. And then this Italian goes here. And we can see U-boat. Yeah, some good stuff coming in here. And the BEF came back right away after it's must have easily evacuated Portugal. It's ready to be rebuilt. All right, so put this stuff in here. 544 is going to be available quickly as we might need that pretty soon on the Russian front. Okay, that is it, folks. Here's where the action will be for June and July. So we're going to have to take a break here and uh, I'll come back next time to a new turn. Okay, so we launch right into the next turn's support segment. This is where the action's going to be. Now, unfortunately for the Germans, if you zoom in on this card, they just rolled terribly on their Air Force. They're just not needing the brakes they need to make this going to be successful, but we need to press them on it. Uh, so let's get started with a support segment effort to place a beachhead right here in the English Channel. And of course, there will be some consequences to that, namely <laughs> that uh, they will be intercepted. So before the Germans send out their sub, so they will send out a sub, they can send a sub with this. So they're gonna send a sub with their fleet uh, so I'm going to keep that back. So I need to keep these subs back. Um, and they'll send out their surface fleet. And the British will counter with a CV fleet. Because they know that in there you've got the uh, Graf Zeppelin. So the Germans can send one carrier with their things here. So let's uh, look at the fleet makeup here. Uh, let me set that up. Okay, so we've lined up for the action here. So what do we want to do? We have to decide whether we want a day or a night action first as the Germans. They're the phasing player. So they've got six air factors. They've got two, four, five, six, seven air factors. Um, probably... Uh, it doesn't matter too much whether it's night or day to the Germans. Let's see about the gunnery factors. Well, it's looking like 
the um, they might have more gunnery factors. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, plus ten, eighteen, plus six. 18 plus 6 is 24 gunnery factors to there, not counting the carriers, of course. Um, and they've got 9 plus 7, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So I think the Germans would prefer a day action. Sorry, a night action. The British will go for a day action. Uh, they both get a plus one for having air bases nearby, and the British get an extra plus one just because they picked a day action. Let's see what happens. It's two to two, so it is going to be a day action. So, the first thing we do is assign air strike factors. Um, what they'll do, the Germans are going to assign one factor on this two, two, two. Okay, I think we needed more of these. Okay, I don't think there's enough of these things. And then they'll assign the rest of it to, mm, well, you know what? Graf Spey will try to take out the Victorious. And this will split two and two like this. Or no, three and... No, that's right. I got three left. Two and one. Okay. So, let's get these airstrike factors out. Uh, two airstrike factors here and one airstrike factor here. That's what they're going to do. They do their attacks first. So, let's try this and see what we get. Okay. The illustrious. We have two airstrike factors on it. Let's look at the dice as they come in. This is an exciting battle. Here we go. Oops, I'm dropping dice. I'm excited so much I'm dropping dice. And here we go. Bam. Oh, there's a hit with a six. A six is a hit. Um, let's see what kind of damage they do. It's the illustrious. It's a four, two rating. A two. So they're able to damage the illustrious. So it's going to get damaged. Okay. Let's just put that back there for a damaged one. Sorry, this one here. Okay, so that'll be flipping over to that side for the next round of the battle. Okay. We've got the Graf Space Planes coming in. And they got a hit as well. Damage. Let's use the gray die. Damage is a three. Well, a three is not enough to sink that thing, but it will also be damaged. So that's two damaged carriers. We got one on the Hermes. A one for a one. And I put one airstrike factor on their LBA. I would need a one, a six to do anything. No. Okay, that was pretty good for the Germans. Not great. So now it's their turn to strike back. So what they're going to do uh, is put one of these carriers, this two is going to go on their LBA to LBA. Um, they'll put three on the Graf Spey, we want to get rid of it, and two on the Vittoria Veneto. <laughs> Okay, so those are the attacks here for the Germans, or for the, sorry, for the Allies. So that's two, four, six, seven. So let's do the LBA first. Looking for a six. They got one. Let's see what kind of damage they do. A four. Oh, nice. They sunk it completely. So this is completely sunk. So what we can do is this is what this battle board is for, really. I'm gonna put it over here on top of these things. So, uh, what we have um, is this LBA sunk. Okay, good shooting there. Now we got three shooting on the Graf Spey. Let me get rid of this German carrier. A nuisance that it is. 
a disabled result. So it goes to the disabled box. So it's going to be out of the combat. Um, and then we got two from the illustrious attacking. A three and a two. The illustrious missed its targets. So these guys are damaged now. Okay. So at the end of the round, at the end of the combat round, okay, at the end of the combat round, okay, these go in the delay box. This goes into the naval warfare delay box. The damaged ones come back onto the line. Okay. So as you can see, uh, it's going to behoove the allies now to try for another day action. So we'll try that rather than a night action. The Germans are going to go for a night action to try to win this or at least sink a bunch of the British fleet. We'll see what happens. And here's the results. It's another day action which favors the British. So they assign their target. Oh, I forgot to do my two, we'll put the two U-boats on the Nelson. Let's see what they do to the Nelson. It's disabled, so it goes out into the naval warfare. That was the last round. Okay, I think these guys always get to shoot in the day action. I'm not sure. Can we check that? X-boats do get to attack during that. Okay, so the next round is as we've determined. So the only thing the Germans are going to get is this. Um, what will they try to do? They'll try to sink, which is better. They're both the same. So we'll sink. We'll go after the victorious. See if we can sink it. We rolled a six. That's probably going to sink it. Damage factor of two. Defense factor of two, but I rolled a one, so it escaped. Okay, the torpedoes glanced off or something, so that was uh, not successful. This will be going into the naval warfare delay box. All right. Now, here we go. So I've got these five airstrike factors. So we'll shoot one at each BB. See if we can't take out some of their capital ships. One at each. All right. Now it's not going to be enough to sink these. I'll put two each on the Bismarck and Tirpitz. That's what I'll do. Two on the Bismarck and two on yeah, two on the Tirpitz and one on the Italian one. So the Bismarck. We have a disabled result. Oh, we can't see that. Okay. So the Bismarck is put in the Naval Warfare Delay Box. On the Turpets. Here we go. Three to four missed. And the Vittorio Veneto. Also a miss. All right, so that's really the end of things here. That's the end of the combat. Let's look and see. I believe it's going to be a stalemate. Hold on. Okay, all the remaining ships that were not disabled or destroyed. So these two uh, damaged ones go into the naval warfare delay box. These guys all go to the used box, as do the British ones. So that battle is over. This goes in the used asset box. And these are all used up. All right. And for the actual units themselves, the CV strike surface fleet goes in the delay box. And the strike unit probably goes just in the regular delay box. Just a second. Okay. So, yeah, the CV strike fleet is an air unit, so it goes into the regular delay box after being flipped over to its constituent fleet unit. 
which is, of course, the CV fleet. All right, so here we go. Here's the next constituent battle. This is the two surface fleets. Well, they're over here in the English Channel. That's the battle hex, but here's the constituent fleets. And so we've sent in a variety here of units, both rolled low on the uh, intelligence rolls, so they only got seven ships each in there for this attack. A little bit low, but they're coming in, and we got a roll for the day or night. Let's see. Germans are going to try a different die. They'll try the gray die this time. They don't feel like they're getting any luck. Again, we have the same criteria. No U-boats. I don't have any more left. I'm going to send the U-boat out there, which I want to do. So here we go. And plus one on that yellow die. A six and a six. On the non-phasing faction wins, which is the British. So they again take a day action. Germans can't come to grips with their fleets. It's continuing to be a carrier battle situation. Well, all the Germans have is this. They got a three-factor air unit, so they're going to split it up one, one, and one. And uh, so we'll do, we'll do it that way. Green, blue, and gray. Green, blue, gray for each of the ones that they've got. Green, blue, and gray, and it's a complete whiff. No luck for the Germans there. All right, so the they're going to try to get serious about sinking some ships. The British air will go after the German air combat. We're going to get rid of those things, and the Furious and the Glorious will come after these Italian ships. I'll put... Two, two, and one. One here. And two here. Like this. Okay. Let's do this. First, Andrea Doria's strike is a four, so that missed. The two on the Conte de Cavior. Four to one. Another whiff. And finally, two shots on the Guilio Cesar. A five, so they did do a disabled result on that. It goes to the Naval Warfare Delay Box. Okay, well, round two, we're sticking around. Germans have got to beat that yellow die somehow. Plus one again. Ugh. Get that thing out of there. Look at all this. Need that vacuum cleaner. All right, we need some new felt pretty soon. All right, here we go. Trying to plus one on the yellow die. They did it again. Look at that. Plus one makes a big difference. So here we go. Um, yep, the Germans will do the same thing they did before. One, one, and one. So black, green, and blue this time. Black, green, blue. One, one, and one. Black, green, and blue. Oh, look at that. Black is a five. Green is a six. The blue will miss because that needed a six. That's a that's a double. That's a hit on that. And a disabled on that. Here's the sinking roll. And yep, the glorious has been sunk. Alright. Good shooting there. This has been disabled. Um shooting back. They'll do the same things they did before. Uh, two, two, and one. We'll mix it up a bit. Two, two, and one here. And then three. So we'll do the air to air first. British, three shots on their land based air. They did get a six. There it is. Let's see how uh, oh, the defense on this thing is only a two. A one, no damage to it. Oh, oh well. So those are both done. I go to the used asset box. And uh, here we go. Two shots on the Cesar Culio Dilio. 
<laughs> a six. Well, a six. Uh, this thing only has a defense of two. A four. So it's been sunk. So it joins the ranks of the sunk. Two shots on the Andrea Doria. A five is rolled, so that's a disabled. It goes with... Uh, with this one. All right. And a final shot on the Cesar. Nothing. Okay. So the outcome of this was two disabled chips. And a war box. And two sunk ships. The Glorious and the Julio Dilio. So there's another carrier sunk. It's been a rough time for the British carriers but they pulled it off this time and since there's mutual losses on both sides nobody was completely sunk by the second round etc these both go to the delay box sorry the naval warfare delay box so we'll see that's pretty full now with quite a few ships these all go to the used asset box and that's the end of the Naval combat. So let's see what the Germans want to do. Do they want to try to place down? First thing they're going to do is place down a sub. Okay. So they got a sub out there. Well, sub fleets can be tested by an interceptor. So they're going to send their interceptor out. And here's their interceptor. Needs to be populated. With an air unit, so they got a 2-4 air unit that can do it, anything on the map. That leaves three LBAs in England. And the Germans have three LBAs left in France. What an exciting turn. All right, so these guys uh, are done. These go to the Naval Warfare Delay Box. This goes to the Used Asset... Er, not sure how that handled. Let me let me see. Yeah, since there's no combat, this just goes to the used asset box. This though does go to the delay box. Okay, so that leaves with the Germans with two air units left. So let's think about what they can do with these um, for next turn. So if we look here at Iraq, which is a very attractive proposition that they might want to try to rush through uh, by deploying two air units here with a blitz they can deploy two um, it might be worth it if they can deploy just one it might be worth it too they can get a three to one if they can deploy two okay uh, so uh, there's probably no chance of them getting anything else in there so um, that's a very dicey situation. They might be able to pull it off. Or do the British really want to defend that? That's a very good question. Or do I go for an air combat up in England? Which is the air combats, um, basically, they're a little bit ahead here. I didn't. I haven't decided if I want to try to do a base attack, but if I do a base attack, then I'm down to two air units. Then maybe if I got lucky with the base attack, yeah, this is coming off this turn. Um, yeah, I haven't put anything in Russia yet either. I don't think I want it in Russia at this time. Um, right. Right, right, right. Uh, still thinking. Let me pause it. Right. The Germans are going to go all in, so to speak, over here. So they won't risk doing an air base attack in. They've had a bad luck up there. I don't think it's worth it. They're going to go all in. They're going to try to place one here and one here to get the best odds that they can on that 
and they're going to send in, they'll send in the first one, the three factor unit, um, see if the British want to intercept. If the British intercept, they'll be at a disadvantage here, and they might lose an air unit uh, when the Germans do not. Um, let's see how aggressive they are. Roll the infamous yellow die. And the die roll is a six. They are aggressive. They're going to go for it. So in they go. And an air unit. Precious air unit is sent. So the Germans are attacking first. Let's get the die roll tray over here for the excitement. All right. Here we go. Three Germans attacking two factor air LBA. For the British, and to add more excitement, the die has been dropped. It has been located. So here we go. Three dice. Big attack for the Germans. Oh, they did get it. They rolled a six. This thing, it's pretty tough, though. It's got a defensive three. Let's see what the Germans do to it. Let's see. Oh, they sunk it. Yeah, that's exactly what the British did not want to see happen. They gotta get something back. Here's the British counter assault. They got a six. What did they do to it? It's got a defensive two. And they rolled only a one. Oh, it survived the attack. So what happens here? This goes to the delay box. This is a bad result, I think, for the Brits. Okay, so we got a major victory here. Um, so what happens? The stalemate procedure for the non-phasing factions remaining ships. Uh, and so this goes to the delay box. Um, if the phasing faction won a major victory, place the non-phasing faction support unit in the delay box. Okay, then the non-phasing faction, hold on a second here. Okay, so the non-phasing faction can try to contest it again, but there's no LBAs to populate another air unit. So they can't contest it, so they allow it to be placed. This goes to the used asset box. And the Germans have now retained one LBA. So, they can then populate this with an LBA, and now they have two air forces on the Baghdad attack, which is what they were looking to do to get the odds up to three to one. And then, of course, then we putting a marker on top of it, a blitz marker. So, that ends the support phase. The Germans have one, they have nothing left. So, British have an air force, so that's that. So let's go to maneuver, regular movement. Okay, so I've moved everybody. Uh, I've got this scaling thing. All right, so the, here's the situation on this front. Still ready to invade, but more and more troops are heading over to the east front. Oh, I forgot to send a troop up there. Yeah, this guy can't build. He's going to have to transport um, up to Finland, because we got to try to keep Finland in the war. That might be hard. Okay, that might be hard. Uh, I really can't. I can go here, like that. Maybe get one more guy in there. Try to make it hard for the Soviets to take it. At least make it difficult. Okay. So as you can see, we've formed a decent front line. But we're not ready to attack in Russia yet. So I didn't put out the blitz markers except for one here so that I can try to peel back the Russians from that river 
expose Kiev and force them on the retreat there. I've pulled out a lot of units from the Greek area. I've assembled the units that will make the Africa Corps. The Africa Corps is going to construct itself here and then move into Russia after that. So um, uh, it won't be used in the Middle East because I'm hoping my three to one attack on Baghdad will be successful. The delay box. Okay, so that's what I'm doing in Iraq is simply breaking this down. So I've got six to five, one to one. Can take a step loss here if I need to and still protect the HQ. Um, yeah, excitement there. So that's pretty much it. Uh, Germans have decided to, they've put as much as they want to offensively into Baghdad. They're going to try to take it now with as much air Luftwaffe as possible. So that's it. Let's do these attacks. We'll start up here. We've got a blitz attack here. Um, trying to take this guy out. I'll be able to retreat that way no matter what. So we've got 12 to 3. There's a 4 to 1 with two shifts makes it a 9 to 1. 9 to 1 shot. Here's the roll. A 4. 4 is pretty good on the 9 to 1. It's a DR2 slash 1. So... It takes out, oh no, 9 to 1, DR2 slash 2. It's exactly what they wanted. So, Clank eliminated, and they can advance 2. They really, do they want to advance 2? If they do a blitz attack, they'll have, I didn't get the HQ up far enough, did I? Um, it's because I wanted to keep it within range of all those guys there, if possible. So, I've got 10, 11, 12, 4 to 1 on this guy. Or I can do like this, a 2 to 1 on this guy. Neither one sounds great. Um... I think we'll do this. We can do 8, 10, 12 to 3, 4 to 1, a 3 to 1. Yeah, we'll do a 3 to 1 on him in the mountains. Uh, there. Okay, why not? Okay, so that'll be the exploitation for that. Okay, we've got two regular attacks. I guess we could have done a blitz attack here in uh, on Marseille. Really wouldn't matter. Uh, there's only one step there, but we'll do it it's four to one. So three to one. Down to a three to one. There's a five. Five on three to one. There's a DR one. One slash one. So they lost a step. But Marseille is taken, which is what they care about. There. Okay. So that's the Marseille attack. I didn't show that. We're going to do the Baghdad attack now. Here's the roll, and it's a two, thank the gods, a two on three to one, it's a DR1, that's all we want, we want them out of there, they're forced to retreat, and we can move in, that's what we want. That takes care of Baghdad. Okay, one thing I forgot to do up here is I actually moved into Persia. I have to declare war on Persia this turn so that then they can, one, two, march in and take Tehran uh, to protect it. So that is that is going to happen here when the Russians have their turn. Okay, so secondary attacks... Okay, we don't need to do another attack here. We could do another attack. I've got one, two, three, four, five. It's a one-to-one -one again. Um, 
I've got two shifts to make it a two to one now. We're not going to worry about it. We're not going to worry about it. Okay. I didn't try to destroy these guys because it was going to be harder to destroy them to, than to make sure that I took the hex. So there's going to be an extensive fight for Baghdad because I don't think the Germans can push to Kuwait. It's just not on their battle plan. They're not going to be able to do it. Russia's in the war now. They have to deal with it. Okay, secondary attack. Last secondary attack is up here. We've got 1, 2, 12 factors attacking. I'm not sure if the armored step has to lose a step if they're not blitzing. Let me see. All right, it's a 3 to 1. They would have to lose an armored step. 3 to 1 with a 3. Good result. DR1. That will force them out of that and let us advance in to that, which is what we wanted to do. Okay. All right, now it'll be reserve movement. Let me take care of that. All right, quite an exhausting turn as there was a lot of new things that happened there. But as you can see, uh, if I can go, I can only go one times here. It's not a negative zoomer, but there's one times there. So still no landing in Great Britain. Baghdad has fallen, so I've taken three objectives so far. That's worth it. And starting to threaten the Russians in the south a little bit. But it's going to be a slog. If they can go ahead and get Minsk and Kiev by the end of the year, that would be amazing. That would give me nine objective hexes as long as I don't lose one. So can that be done is the question. All right. That's it, folks. Okay. Situation in Baghdad. Control. Germans got the Baghdad now. They didn't, it was not a bitter battle, and it took a lot of airplanes to do it. But now they can concentrate their air forces either on Russia or Britain, depending on when they come back. Unfortunately, they haven't been coming back very quick. The Goering is not running the Luftwaffe efficiently so far. This year. All right. When I come back, it will be the Allies' turn, Western Allies. All right, folks, here we go. After a very exciting Germanic turn in July, it's time to bring on the Western military aid card and see what we have for political events. We're adding one to the die here and see if they get some military aid. With A3, conflicting plans, no result. Sorry, boys, no aid for you. All right, so let's see what the British are going to do. Um, everybody's down to, you know, all we've got is this one Air Force um, to do something with. Uh, again, there's no way to seal off the English Channel for invasion. We've already talked about that. So, uh, what can be done is, uh, what do we want to do with this uh, air unit? Probably just keep it back for interception. Uh, I don't think I want to risk doing an air raid with it. Uh, not at this time. Next turn, I know the Germans are getting at least one air force, and they have a good chance of getting back a fleet as well. So, whereas I don't have exactly the same chances, we better hold on to it. So that limits their options. They don't have a lot to do. They can and they will take these two units here in the East Africa box. Zoom in on those. Okay. Those are sitting there in the East Africa box. They'll go ahead and build this 2-2 HQ there. And they're setting up for an offensive in the East Africa. Now they have that HQ plus another infantry step. Not enough yet, but it's a threat. This, this uh, South African goes in the delay box. This goes to the force pool. Okay, other than that, 
They lost their, their Rocky unit in Conquest. Let's zip over here to take a look at the Iraq situation. It's probably a little too close. Okay. So you can see we've got these two guys here. I've got nothing to combine them with. Um, so what we want to do is avoid getting them isolated, which could easily happen if they stay here. So they'll need to move back a couple hexes. Let's see, is that far enough? Not really, because they could get around there. There, is that enough? One, two. It's really not enough either. They're going to have to go back to it here. That's safe. One, two, three, four. Yeah, they can't get into the swamps. Swamp terrain. Where's that terrain chart? Um, I think it's just part of rough terrain. Rough is hills, forests, and swamps. Two movement factors. So... That's as far as they'll be able to get. Uh, so they'll try to hold them off there. I do have another New Zealander that can go one, two up to there, giving me five points of defense. But eventually they'll be able to push me back all the way to Kuwait. So I might move this guy from the East Africa box into the Middle East box. I can go... Actually, I can go from the Middle East box or the Arabian Sea zone. Oh, okay. So I can actually take this thing and move it to the Arabian Sea, okay, which is over here. I've got a troop transport and inherent supply convoy there. These guys are always in supply, so I can go ahead and reinforce this area here a little bit. That's probably a good idea to do. All right. Um... Rebasing of aircraft. Uh, well, I don't have any aircraft down there now, but I have some that are used assets, so I don't need to do that uh, up here. So I'm good, I think. We'll keep it that way. I'm not going to send anything else to Africa at this point. I was hoping for some military aid that would have been useful to get some French units in or something. But that failed to happen. So that's it for the, the Brits. There's really nothing else for them to do. So then we bring on the Soviets. Here we go, their card. And there's no political events that can apply. So they just go directly into uh, the support segment. For support, zoom back out. And then we've got Soviets really can't uh, use a zoom in to really capture what's going on there. But, um, so what do they have for support? Well, they only have an interceptor at this time. Uh, they can't use that for air power attacks. It's only for interception. So all they can do is try to do some attacks, basically to lose some steps. <laughs> Uh, so let me see what the Soviets are going to do, and I'll come back. All right, so the Soviets have had to slow down in the south because this penetration by the 864 is quite dangerous. They've got a lot of stuff coming up this way. Um, so I decided I'd better defend here. Um, but it's, uh, it's a bit iffy. Um, actually not happy with my situation over here and I think I might have to fall back I think I will fall back because I can't defend this well so these guys are falling back here here um, this one will fall back to Kiev these guys will fall I don't I really don't want to give that up but I've got to shorten my lines in order to defend this well so the Russians are going to retreat on the southern part, on the northern part. They'll try to press an attack towards East Prussia because this HQ is out of range here. So that's where they'll attack. 
and they'll do a low odds attack up here in Helsinki. So that's the thinking for the Russians. Down here, I was like, oh, I think I missed my chance to declare war on Persia. Um, I pro if I had last turn, uh, I'd be able to move one, two. Yeah, I'd be able to cut them off from it. So if I had played properly, I would have declared war last turn. This would have gone into the Axis Force pool. And now this turn, these guys could flip over and go one, two. This guy goes one, two to there. Something like this. Try to prevent the Germans from coming up through there. Actually, <laughs> It's looking a bit thin on the ground, isn't it? Um, okay, so they'll do that. Um, okay, so let's do these attacks up here. We'll do the attack on Helsinki first. They've got three, six, nine, plus the HQ across the water. Nine to five is a three to two. Each have a shift. So it's a three to two attack. Not the greatest of results, but we're actually just trying to attrit them, and I need to start losing some Soviet steps. I know that sounds weird, but I want to have enough in my force pool to build them next turn until I get some more of them in. So here we go. Three to two. High roll is not good. A, D. Okay. An A, D is an A, D result, I think. Uh, an AD means the attacker can um, either retreat or take a step loss. I haven't looked at that for a while. Let me check that. Okay, so yes, we can take an attacker step loss and not retreat. That's going to be the plan there. The Germans are happy to see that, actually, as they don't really want to lose their ally quite yet. Okay, not quite yet. All right, um, the other attack is the three to two. I've got three, six, nine, 12. 15 to 12 is a one to one. And then uh, one shift for the HQ. Germans don't have an HQ. So here's the result for that. Hey, they got a one is a DR1 and I am able to take the retreat so I'm gonna have to do that retreat like this and this and the Russians will go in and they're making some headway here on the Germans okay so now I'll do reserve movement quickly um, reserve movement this guy up here in Finland comes one down one two uh, towards that, I don't know how they're going to, yeah, yeah, well, you know, they need to, pro I think I better keep that up there, because I've got, let me get the, um, the Russians do have a convoy and put out here, and they can start shipping some units up there, so we'll keep that intact at the moment um this guy will so up at the north here pointing with these tweezers doink stay there here get some reinforcements in see this finnish attack is a big commitment i don't have the assets or the blitz markers to really push that so we're going to try to force the germans to do something over here um, the Germans might, might need to do something over here. We'll see what happens. We might start having some air battles on the Eastern Front. Uh, those are the two attacks. Now I'll do the reserve moves. I started that. Okay, there's nothing really here I want to do. He's in a good position right here. That's a little bit weak. I've got enough stuff here in Minsk. Over here I'm going to Withdraw to Kiev. I don't want to lose Kiev. 
Actually, I'll put, you know what, um, that infantry unit will go here, and the armored unit will retreat back. So that's what I'll have in Kiev. Okay, so there's my front line for the Russians here, like that, over in Persia. Uh, we're <laughs> slowly going to make our way to that. And we want to block the road here. Um, that's not really a great blockage of the road. Um, this will be better to go here. That way they got the mountain hex blocking that off. Okay, whoops, it's not very good. There we go. So this guy moved to here to block it off. This guy actually... Um, one, two, he was here. He could actually do the same thing. I'm just worried about getting cut off, but he really can't get there to cut me off. One, two, three, four. He can't go into Turkey. You gotta watch these borders here. They're a little bit light on the map. It's hard to, hard to see this. That's why I made a mistake and moved across here. Persia goes all the way up to Yerevan. Okay. Also remember, this Turkish frontier belongs to Russia as well. So that should secure the Persian thing for the moment. I'm trying to keep um, that alive. The Allies, the Germans, the Axis are going to be more concerned if they want to put the effort into it, into taking Kuwait and sealing this off. Um, that's what they're trying to prevent here. Keep these guys pinned down um, like that. Okay. Right now, their supply is going up through here. I guess it can take a road then here to Alexandria. Yeah. And then that goes to... That supply goes through to Athens, and then that gets all the way home on a rail hex. Got to really watch these weird supplies in the Middle East, because you can only go through one portion of roads. In other words, I can't go to Amman, if you see this. Here's a road to Amman, okay? Then I can take a rail hex to Beirut. But if I can't use Beirut, I can't use these rail hexes that go through to Alexandria, then turn into a road back over in Libya. So that's the problem. you got to really be careful here. Sometimes I wonder if I get it right. Okay, that's it for everybody. Um, the next step is, of course, the end of the turn, and we have a lot of that happening as we're going to go ahead and show you the delay box. The delay box situation is massive and we need to roll all of these things. Here's what we have for the Germans. A lot of this is due to not losses. In fact, most of it's not. Most of these are due to reorganizations. Okay. So let's put the Air Force into the list at the end, looks like. Sometimes I like to randomize this stuff, so we'll put it like that. Uh, let's zoom in a bit so you can see all of this. That's in the regular delay box for the Germans. For the Allies, they have this. And you can see there's some important stuff that's being rolled for them. So that's their regular delay box. Then we have the other delay box, which is the naval warfare delay box, and that could yield some surprising results. So let's do this in threes, okay? We'll do black, gray, and red for these Germans. They're all minus ones. Black, gray, and red. Wouldn't say that's great. Three three, and four. One, two, three, and four. That's not until the winter. 
that I get that back. Okay. Well, this, this troop convoy will be going in the delay box as well as some other stuff uh, next time as it comes off the map. Okay. And, oh, and that's right. I forgot to transport this guy to there. Okay. That's right. Okay. Um, yes. Okay. So three more dice. White, green, and yellow for the Germans. White, green, and yellow. Well, they get the Panzer in quickly. That's nice. Comes in next turn. These don't come in till four turns. One, two, three, four, and even five turns. That's way up in January for them. Okay, here's the important rolls. What do I want to use? Blue and Blue and gray. Now they're looking for some really low results here. Blue and gray. Oh, well, Germania is happy about that, as those both will come in next turn. That is crucial. Very crucial. All right. Now, on the next batch here, it's the Allies' turn. So use green, black, and white. Green, black, white. These are some crucial rolls here for the allies. And they are just rolling flat. Green, black, white. Green. Well, that comes in, but the black doesn't come in, nor does the white. So that's three turns for that. That's not until September, and that isn't until November. So that was not a good roll. This coming in is nice, but we don't care about it that much. And now we'll do gray, red, and blue. Gray, red, blue. More crucial rolls. More crucial rolls. Mmm. Good results. But two turns for the Air Force is one turn, maybe too late. Um, and this, this comes in. It's nice to have another small land-based air. Put that in the med, and the South Africans come in in two turns also. Okay? Now, for the naval delay box. A lot happening in here. Here's the Italians to start. Then we'll do some of the British ones, the damaged carriers from the battles, the disabled units, Okay, and their surface fleet. And then finally the Germans will come in. They have the Bismarck and the Graf Zeppelin were disabled. They have two U-boats in there. And finally, a subfleet and a surface fleet. So some exciting things happening, starting with the Italians. Yellow, green, and gray. Yellow, green, and gray. Are they looking? And these are all minus one. These are all minus one. The Italian fleet, none of these were great. Um, so the Italian fleet's out of it for four turns. One, two, three, four. So you can forget about it. Okay, we've got the, these two are four. One, two, three, four, and three. So the Italian battleships are out for a few months. And that's that. All right, let's see what the British can do. Let's first do their injured carriers. We'll do a white and a red. White, red. And these are how many seasonal turns? Okay, white and red. So five seasonal turns. <laughs> let's see what that means. One, two, three, four, five. So that comes in a year later, these guys come in, two seasonal turns. They'll come back in in the winter, so that's not too bad. But that one carrier was really badly damaged. Okay, so far we haven't rolled any sixes in here. We'll do a green, gray, and black. Green, gray, black. Any sixes? No. Green gray, 
and black. Oh, look at that. That was a crucial roll. They got the surface leap back in in one turn. This is four turns. And this is two turns. All right. So that was okay for them. Let's do the Germans now. We'll do yellow, blue, and black. Yellow, blue, black. All minus ones. Yellow, Oop, the Graf Zeppelin's in. Blue, the Bismarck's in also. And finally, this was a four, so three turns for that one, two, three. Okay, and now some crucial rolls here. Green, gray, and red. Green, gray, and red, coming up. That service fleet is something that we need. Green, gray, and red. Do, 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 do. Ha. Well, they did get that in. They got the U-boat in. The subfleet, though, <laughs> these subfleets just aren't lasting for the Germans. Six turns, five turns plus four turns, so nine turns for the subfleet to come in. Oh, terrible. They can't, they're not doing well at all with the subfleets. One, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine. Not until July of August next year. Service fleet and U boat come in, though. So it looks like we'll be getting ashore in England based upon our, those results. Let's move the turn marker and see what's coming in. Look at all this stuff. This is the exciting part. I know it's a weird, weird little game when the exciting part is how the delay rolls work out, but you get used to it. Last turn of summer, this is what's coming in. So the Germans are getting an air force, an air force, and a surface fleet. Okay. The British are getting a surface fleet. So um, that right there means that the Germans outnumber them, although it's not going to be a big land bridge there if they decide to do it. But they do have the capacity now. They have more, uh, assuming they win this or the, the contests, they have enough to get a beachhead out there and onto Brighton Beach. That's probably where they're going to land, right here. Here's the, uh, again, I have to make a decision based on next turn, because next turn, the British are gonna get another Air Force and the Russians are going to get an Air Force, but I don't know if I'm going to get my Air Forces back. Because I'll have this guy, this troop convoy, will be going to the delay box. And these two air units in Iraq will be going to the delay box. So I might be able to get something over there. I don't know if it's going to be a lot. <laughs> uh, but this is the thing we're trying to do is to take on England, so we've got to go for it. Okay, let's see what happens now. So we got some U-boats coming back in. This 447. We also have a bunch of air units coming in over here. Um, yeah. the British are getting these guys back in. I don't think I've rolled for a 4-4, no. This guy's still in reduced state here. So the British are getting back these air units. Really takes a lot of organization here. These land units. Okay, these two ships will be coming in, so we'll put them with the fleet. I also get, these subs might help out when I'm doing my fleet placement, who knows? We'll find out and use one of them. For that. Okay, so there goes these ships back to the fleet. Also, these used assets come back, so we've got to take care of those as well. <laughs> I 
All right, just so much to do here. There's really a lot to do when you play SK that you don't have when you're playing the regular game. Okay, the Polish Expeditionary Unit finally would have come on, but it's been conquered. Put that over here. I'm not actually sure if that stays in the game or not. It's a striped unit. Um, okay, got a bunch of French units that could come in. Um, okay, so we continue setting this up. So all these air units will be coming in. These come in into the force pool, Russian force pool. Let's get this figured out. Okay, big deal, this delay segment. All right. These are all German ships now. There's an Italian ship. German, Italian. These were all used in the attack last turn. They are coming back in. Put them with their fleets. Ooh, the Italian fleet really got knocked a bit. Knocked about, but they aren't going to be able to participate very much anyway. Okay. Um, there we go. And uh, I'm going to see what the Brits are bringing in. These three air units, four air units coming in, and a variety of ships coming in to their main fleet in Scapa Flow. All right. Um, all right, so where do the Germans want to put some air units? Uh, one, two, three. Well, they only have one air unit there, and I've got two, so I need at least, I'd say, four up here. I've got one, two, three. So let's put the two best fighter units here. Okay, that'll be enough in that area, leaving me a chance to put a couple of air units here. I've got two against the Russians already, so put these two in the Middle East here um, within range of Kuwait. Yeah, I can't, Damascus will be too far away so Baghdad's going to be very important, but I don't know if I'll be able to supply Baghdad. I'm not going to be actually going to do that, so um, I wouldn't be putting an air unit down there this turn. More of a chance of putting them... Oh, I've got one in Bucharest. I've got two in Bucharest. So i got four on the Russians. So... Um, got to think, where am I going to do operations? Definitely not in Iraq. Operations will be down here. So, we've got enough. It's just a question of where do I want to put them. So, might be useful to have one just in case in the med. As I might be able, oh, I got one in the med. Okay. So, definitely got plenty of air. That's for sure. All right. We'll put one in Copenhagen to cover that area. And, uh, just another one in Paris, I guess, to cover that. Okay. So the Brits have these four air units. Um, this 2-2 two, two unit. Until I lose something, I will put it down here in Kuwait. Um, 
might be useful to have one in the East Africa box and these two at home for this round. So yeah, put that up there and put that one there. Spread them out, spread them out. Okay, and that's the situation. Okay, ah, sorry. We do have some more units to put away over here. I did have more Italians. I was like, that seems a little low. Okay, so there's the rest of the Italian fleet. And that's being put here. Where is it? In Brussels. This one, everything's going up in Scapa flow as there's no stacking limit for those. Okay, that's the end of the deployment. And we'll be getting into the last turn of which, of course, the Germans' efforts will take the most time. So let me pause here and think about how that's going to work. Okay, so I'm not so sure it's optimal at this point to try to invade England, but I came on board with this particular uh, game to demonstrate a possible invasion of England, and now that I can finally do it, let's give it a try, okay? I'm very interested in using my support units to take Kiev <laughs> and Minsk though but I don't know if I'm strong enough to get them both in the next two turns we're going to try to at least get one and force a breakthrough in the south of Russia but right now let's set up the battle because we're going to have two fleets coming in the German surface fleet will be taking on the British surface fleet. And this hex, as before, I'm gonna zoom in on it. Here we go, another bruising battle. Let's roll the intelligence rolls. I don't know, I won't get to know what the Allied one is. I did check the Allied fleet though, and they're down to only two Meagre carriers. So I think I got my Graf Zeppelin back, so. Yeah, this could be interesting if a day action's rolled. Anyway, let's check this out. Here's my intelligence roll for the Germans. It's a five, so I can bring in 11 ships. So here they are, I'm gonna go get them. Okay, so with an 11, it was pretty much all the German ships. And an Italian, I can bring in six large ships or capital ships. And there's those six there, including the Zeppelin and some cruisers coming in and you know the Br german cruisers are better than the british ones so the gunnery advantage might be interesting i can also bring in a u-boat into the mix and an air unit I want to make sure I've got some decent ones to fight with up here. Uh, when the time comes, to place an air unit. So uh, let's see. I've got a four, a three, no, two threes. Okay, so I'll bring in a three. Okay, and the British will bring in. I'll bring in a two. Okay. That's what the British will probably bring in unless they have a really bad intelligence roll. Their intelligence roll is a five, so they're bringing in 11 ships too. Let me go get them. And there's the British fleet. Let's not forget that they also have this caught at close range card. So we're not sure if they want a day or night action or if they care. Um, Uh, so, they can save the card till the second combat round. Um, so the Germans have five air factors to five. So it'd be an even fight in an air-to-air -air combat. Uh, but factor-wise, it looks like the Germans, 4, 12, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24... 
to the British. Uh, one, two, three, four, sixteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, 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 forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, for
they can bring in a four and a four. So that's the fight that we have over here between the two air units over the channel. So let's go. All right, so the British, well, sorry, the Germans are always first as the attacker facing player. The four on the four is the first one. And they get one six out of that package, which is pretty good. The two, it's enough to damage it. Okay. And a three factor on the other one. They rolled another six. So another possible result on this is a six. So this one's sunk. Oh, that's pretty severe. Hopefully the British can do something similar in return. Here's four shots on the four factor units. They do get a six also. And the designer did say these can be high attrition battles. And the uh, damage is a six, so these two guys are out of it. They go to the delay box. And I've got four shots on his three banger. One six. Could be enough. Could be enough. And another six sinks it too. So I do believe that this can be treated as a major success for the British fighting them off. Wow, this is the stuff of legends, isn't it? So, the enemy task force cannot retire. Every ship in the enemy task force is sunk or disabled and every LVA is destroyed a major victory. Okay. Um, Okay, they don't have any remaining ships. Then the non-phasing player, okay. Place the non-phasing factors. Okay, so. In this case, the attacker did not win the battle. The defender won the battle. Follow the stalemate procedure for the phasing factions of remaining ships, LBAs, and exposes. So these, this one goes into the used box. Okay. If the non-phasing player won a major victory, place the phasing factor support unit in the delay box. Uh, the non-phasing faction then returns its support unit to the force pool. Okay. They can be used again later. All right. Couldn't concede the victory, which means this goes back. We go back over to this part of the battle. The British air goes back to the force pool and the German air goes to the delay box. And now the Germans probably can't effectively do this invasion anymore. They do have one more air unit that they can get contested. And it would be uh, a three and a three versus a three and a three. Good chance that that would be an even battle. I think we might want to take our chances and do something against the Russians over here. Well, it's the same thing though. They're gonna be able to intercept anything that I do. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I guess we'll, we'll keep fighting it out. We'll keep fighting it out because um, we need to try to destroy the air power here. So here comes again another battle. Uh, Alan Brooke, whoever it was, doubting, I guess. He's there, ready to fight the battle. Now we have two threes. Versus two German threes. These threes, the German threes have a little bit better defense, the three five anyway. So 
Here we go. Although that wouldn't have stopped them before. All right, we got a three on there. They're three five, so they're twin engine fighters versus each other. The Germans are first. They roll nothing. And again, on the other air unit, three five, three shots. No two sixes on that one. That's gonna probably kill it with a four. Barely killed it. I rolled a four on two dice. That's killed. All right, now they're shooting back. Let's see what the British can do. How badly can the British fight them back? Let's see, a three on the three five. There is a six on it. Okay. Its defense factor is a two. And I only rolled a one. So even though I got a hit, it survived. Okay, three on this one. There's another six. British are shooting well. And here's their shot on that guy. A two damaged it. Okay. And this is put in the drink. So now, do I go for a limited victory? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me think about this. It's because I got the disabled or damage result on that German unit here. I think it's enough for them to go ahead and withdraw now after round one. Uh, and uh, I retire and I did disable or damage. Oh, sorry. No, if I get a destroyed result... It's a limited victory. So if I, if I retire now as the British, they'll get a limited victory if I, okay. All right, so I checked this out on a limited victory. This Air Force actually goes to the used asset box. Can't be used again. Um, it doesn't go to the delay box but this guy gets to be placed. Um, and now I'll have an Air Force for next turn. This guy will be putting the beachhead down and replacing it with the Air Force moving to the delay box. Okay, so the way it is is that this Air Force then is going to be put in the used used box and it's going to go there from the used box to the delay box this thing since it retreated early more or less only after one round is put in the used asset box but it's not going to be put in the delay box it's going to be put back in the force pool for next turn so that's an interesting twist on things these air forces that were damaged or fought go into the used asset box and i place the bridgehead, the infamous bridgehead here. Beachhead on the two side, meaning, okay. And it's only got a stacking limit of three, so I can only put a three factor unit on there. Okay, so the Germans did it. Whether or not they're going to like that, we'll find out next turn after the delay, but we'll see what happens. So they were able to do it, Demonstrated that it can be done. And I don't think, though, that the Germans were very efficient at this. Nevertheless, at the end of this, they've got seven, uh, seven uh, victory hexes. Um, this is the eighth one. They'd really like to get this one. That's going to be hard, though. And then there's two in Russia uh, that are within striking distance. So let's continue and get the... Uh, we'll go ahead and get ready here with the um, German turn. Uh, they've got to go ahead and do their organizational phase, then their preliminary movement phase. I don't have any more support units to put out. Yeah, I do have, I suppose, 
I've got a couple of U-boats left. I'll just hold on to them till next turn. Maybe they can do something that's uh, going to be annoying for the allies then. Nothing really further can be done with those at the moment. So we'll hold on to them until then. Okay, here we go. Get the organization phase done for the Germans. Okay, so we're doing the attacks. The first blitz marker has to go on the beachhead. So that's already done. I'll just move that aside and put the 864 there. This guy traveled across and landed there. Looks dangerous, but it might not be easy for him to be attacked. I don't know what good that will do, but we'll get him on there anyway. Um, okay. Um, that's it. I can only put three steps on here. I'll have another. Uh, let's zoom back out a bit. Another blitz attack in Africa. This is kind of a cheesy one. I'm going to do a three to two. Likelihood will be an exchange, but um, get a chance to, if he takes the exchange, um, he'll lose the city. If he doesn't take the exchange, the worst case is an AD result. Let's do that one first. And the result is a five, which is a repulsion. They have repulsed the attack. Way to go, Free French. That's an AD, so I don't want to lose any steps, so I'll retreat. And that's the end of that particular movement. And okay, the other attack that we have, it's a bliss attack, is a 4 to 1 over here. I've got 20 factors, but he also has an HQ, so 20 to 6. Um, along the edge of the Pritbat Marshes is going to be um, a 3 to 1, two shifts for HQ and armor. They got a shift, so it goes from a 3 to 1 to a 6 to 1, back down to a 4 to 1. And this attack is a success with a uh, DR2 and lose a step. That's going to be three steps that they lose. So they'll lose one, two, and a third step off of the HQ. That's a good result for the Germans, and they can advance into the hex, which they will do as much as they can. Why not? And then they'll do another attack, of course. Uh, along the flank there, and I'm not so sure. Okay, that's the only other attack that we have. So now it's regular combat. I need to see what happens when I, I don't know if I can do a beachhead landing yet. I don't think so. Actually, I'm wrong. I can do a beachhead landing. And that's exactly what they're going to do. That's part of the blitz combat phase. So they go right in there. Okay, very nice means they can start attacking. Uh, we can start making some problems for these guys as we load up the beachhead here. I should probably get an airborne marker next turn. So we can cause some problems. We can definitely cause some problems here. So um, yeah, we'll see what we can do to wreak some havoc on these guys. All right, um, so there's the landing. Uh, I put the Marines here. I don't know if that was smart or not. They really can't attack them very well uh, without having some risks. Weakening London. I could put the 663 over here in London, leaving Southampton open, but I don't really want him to be able to get into Southampton yet. So, uh, yeah. I don't want to attack that marine, I don't think, at this time. But anyway, they've moved it. Okay, so that's uh, now it's in a reserve movement, so now I'll go ahead and do uh, the regular combat. It's not reserve movement yet. We do have regular combat. I'm gonna continue to press on into Russia, southern Russia here. These guys will attack, they've got 13, so that's uh, actually 18, 20, 22 to 5. It would be a 4 to 1 exactly. 
I put the HQ in, but I don't know if I want to. If I don't, with 22 to 3, it'll be a 9 to 1, and they'll be able to advance. I don't have a spare HQ to build. I'm going to have to throw it in and see if I can hold them off at 4 to 1 this time. And here's the roll. It's a 2. Well, that was close. So it's a DR2, but they'll be able to keep the HQ. This guy will die because he can't retreat if he's HQ supported. And the Germans, yes, I guess they will advance in to the hex like that. So they're pressing on Kiev. They are definitely pressing on Kiev. And once they get to Kiev, there's a lot more stuff that can be done. Germans are ready to try to push on to Tunis eventually by clearing out what's left of the Free French. Take a look at that down here. You can see they've stacked up three guys here. This guy's in Oran, Casablanca, Tangier. There's a lot of garrisoning that you have to do uh, down here against the French. Once the French are back in, they're a real pain. You can't ever conquer them. Um, you can only suppress them, and it takes a lot of steps to do that. All right, that's the situation in Africa. Here's the situation in France. Here's the situation in Russia. Notice how the Germans have pressed through the thinner lines of the Russians who will have to fall back again. Um, they just don't have enough to defend down there. The Germans have put a core to stop the Russians at the border in Persia, but they won't be able to stop Persia from being garrisoned and conquered. And there's Baghdad. Okay, oh, I have one more unit to send up. The Hungarians will come into Beirut from Salonika. There they are. Uh, so that's interesting. So trying to get the Germans up to snuff as much as possible uh, in the Middle East. And uh, it's, it's an interesting balance. Eventually, East Africa, they're going to come in up the Nile, and I won't be able to stop that. Probably. Well, eventually you can't stop the Allies and the Russians anyway. That's definitely going to happen. As one guy told me once, you're supposed to lose as the Axis. And I'm like, no. I told him, no, I refuse to lose. But eventually, of course, you are going to lose as the Axis. You might not lose the game, but eventually World War II would not come out in your favor. All right. That's it for the Germans then. We'll move on to the Western Allies here. Okay, I'm parched, but I'm going to get this done. The idea is that we finish this analysis and turn. It's going to be the Western Allies turn. Western military aid with a plus one on the political events and a four guarantee table. Okay, this could be some interesting stuff happening now. On the guarantee table, there it is. So we're adding one to this with a four conflicting plans, no results. Disappointing results for the Western military aid card. Okay, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Okay, so what are they gonna do? <laughs> Again, so taking a look at this, I have no assets to deploy. Sets to deploy. Oh, I suppose I could have used my scratch defensive fleet against that air unit, but I didn't have any air uh, carriers left, so it wouldn't have worked. Forgot to mention that though. Uh, the, in desperation, there is one scratch defensive fleet for the Allies that they could use to oppose a, land, a beachhead, but they can't use it to oppose. Without any carriers, they wouldn't have been able to oppose that particular situation there. Uh, so the, they would have probably gotten creamed if they tried, even with the carriers that they had. Okay, so uh, all that said, the British here, they have a Mexican standoff down here in the Med. Okay, 
no change. Oh, right, I got an extra unit here to buff that up. So I've got, I'll put the 122 up here. So just to show you, we've got some buffing up done here. Uh, the 222 is down here. This is a damaged air unit. Um, actually, the Germans don't even have any air units down here at the moment. Uh, in Africa, all they have is the one unit in Gibraltar, really, and that's not technically in Africa. Uh, but there's no way I can attack, so Middle East is... Die has been cast, so to speak. What we have to do over here is decide how to defend this. Now, I can only attack this marine unit with a defense of two uh, across this river. And to attack that, I've got one, two, three, a three to two. Uh, I could do a two, four, one, I could get that in there. Four to two, a two to one on it. Uh, risking losing my armor. Um, I, I don't see the point of it. I don't see the point of it. I think, if anything, what I'll do is I'll move this 213 down to Southampton to buffer my defenses here. If I attacked, I'd have 8. Uh, plus 3 is 11 to 6. A 3 to 2. Now, they have an HQ themselves, so there's nothing they can do about that. In fact, what the Germans could have done, which they should do, is move that to there and that to there. I forgot to do the reserve move. So now I've got an HQ gear guarding both of them, and I'm not going to do that. No attacks there, so that's the British move. Uh, as you can see, the air assets on both sides have been depleted <laughs> substantially. And we'll see what comes in later when the returns come in after all of the battles. There were quite a few losses of air units there. Heavy losses, really. That situation favors the Germans. Anyway, that's really all the Western Allies can do. So they're done. Let's move on to the Ruskies. So the Ruskies have no um, activities they can do, no support that they can do. So all they can really work on here is continuing to press the Germans. Now they could get six steps. They can get three, six, nine, twelve, two, seven, a three to two on Königsberg, uh, which would harass them greatly. Um, but that's putting way too many assets up in that area. I think instead we'll go after this guy here. Um, as you can see, I'm in danger here of being encircled. So, uh, yeah, um, I don't know if he would waste his armor unit trekking through Pripyat, but he might. Why not? Uh, so, yeah, we're going to have to fall back here. And yeah, we still have the assets that we can use to attack this front. We'll probably move those guys there. That'll go there. That'll go there. That'll go there. Um, range of 2 on the HQ, so I'd have 12, 15 to 4, 3 to 1. Yeah, we'll do a three to one. No, we don't need to do any more than that. Defense is a priority. Uh, let's see, we'll take Tehran, so that will be captured by the Soviets. So that's a minor country. I don't know what happens to them. Uh, they might just be eliminated from the game, I'm not sure. Okay. So, down here in the south, that's a key question. How do we want to address this situation? Um, really can't get anybody but him in front of that there. I could go like this. This guy can come back. 
Uh, this guy could go here. This guy could go here. Uh, that leaves me with nothing in Kiev. Yikes. I have to leave the HQ there. Just don't have enough troops really to to stop this onslaught. Um, don't have them. Do not have them. Um, too many units up here in uh, Finland, really. This guy's going to go there. They'll go there on the Finnish front. I think we better stop that attack. It's not going to do us any good. Um, how many of these things do I have? One, two... Three, four, five, six. And we got some more coming in next turn. Gotta see if I've got enough steps. And I don't have any more steps coming in. So I really don't want to break down any more Russians. Let's uh let's go one, two, we'll go ahead and uh, Need more Russian troops. Need more Russian troops. Um, got too many on the front here. Let's uh, let's leave that guy there, and let's get this HQ down here. One, two. So he'll guard these two guys, and he can guard these guys from there. Okay. Hmm. Quite, quite inefficient. The only thing I can do is probably try to block them off from easily getting into, I better keep somebody in Odessa. Yeah, I've just lost too many guys on this front. The Russian front might get blown open down there. Uh, down near Odessa, it's just not looking good. Not looking good. Um, hmm. We will have to see. They're strong up in the north, but in the south they're extremely weak, and there's no easy way for me to get troops down there with the current situation. Uh, yeah. You know, we might have to create some hedgehogs down here to stop them. Try to stop them. All right. Um, Okie dokie. So that's the only attack I'm going to do. 3, 6, 9, 12. Yeah, so I can actually... I don't need all of these guys. This guy can retreat across. No, I can't do that. We'll have to stay right here. Hmm. Oh, the situation gets to be so desperate down here. I'll go one, two. Yeah, that's right. Great hedgehogs there. Okay. That's it. No more attacks on the south. Nope, no way. Uh, okay. So the German, they have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15 to 4, a 3 to 1 with shifts on each side. So it's a 3 to 1. There's no HQ for the Germans. Who oh, 1 is a DR2. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty severe. I guess they'll go to Warsaw. <laughs> and they advance in. Well, he'll actually, he'll actually advance in to there, freeing this guy up to go someplace, slightly. Okay. So this blitz is gone. No more blitz markers out there at the moment. Uh, that's a good point. I won't be able to use that blitz in Russia. I can only use it on the beachhead if uh, I sustain the beachhead. Okie doke. Let's uh, let's do reserve movement.
That's it. We got reserve movement now for the Russians. So this guy can come back and save himself to there. This guy's going to go there, and oh, he won't be able to protect that guy, but that's okay. That guy can do it. Okay. So we'll, we'll send this guy this way. Yeah. I'm not going to need so much. I need these guys this way. There's my hedgehog defense in the south. I've decided to put a unit in Odessa, a unit in Dnepropetrovsk, and Hedgehog Kiev as best I can. Um, but that doesn't look so great. In Persia, we're going to stack those up so they can build together. And over here, this is going to take a troop convoy to here so I can start supplying them and moving them from the north. So that should be interesting as well. Um, makes you want to get a fleet marker, doesn't it? Try to get that Soviet fleet in the game. Might be too late for that, though. I might have already discarded that production of value card. Okay, that is it for the Russians. Moving and attacking. So they will now... Uh, all of them, everybody, moves to the ever-famous, let's intersperse these, everybody loves the delay box rolls. Look at that. Oh, surface fleet in there. All right, you mix them up. Here's the British ones. Thankfully, those subs are not having an effect on their game very much. And finally, the disabled units. They are in the naval warfare delay box. All right, here we go. Germans have three with minus ones. Red, green, white. Dink, dink, dink. Let's zoom in on it for you guys. There we go. Red, green, and white. Red, green, and white. Red, green, and white. Green, red, and white. Ugh, that's five turns ahead. One, two, three. Not until spring are they back. They don't get that next turn either. That's two turns. So that'll be pretty useless, except maybe in the desert. And they get this back. Okay. So these will all come back next turn. Put those in there. All right. Okay, well, what's next? Let's try yellow, black, and gray. Yellow, black, gray. All minus ones. Oh, now they got this in immediately. But... The black and the gray did not participate. There are four turns out. One, two, three, four. All right. Um, not looking good. Three more. We got the surface convoy. Why is that not? That should be in the naval delay box. Yeah, these should be in the naval delay box. They were, that was a, Street fight. Those go down there. Okay, two more. Black and green. Four, so three turns. One, two, three. And four turns. One, two, three, four. Not a good delay result so far. And finally, the I will do these two British ones here. Blue and white. Three, one, two, three. And four. Okay. And that leaves these naval delay box rolls. Let's do these first. Wow. Let's try red. Not getting good white. Red, white, and blue. Red, white, and blue. German delays. You need some ones or twos. Red 
Uh-oh, that's the grass bay. White, they get in immediately, but they don't get their fleet in. So that's one, one, two, three, four. No fleet. And the graph spay is delayed for huh, just six turns. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll have it in for summer if we're still trying to fight this battle. I don't know if that's going to happen. And the British delays. So we got a yellow and a green. Yellow, green. Here we go. Mm, not great. Three turns for this guy. One, two, three. And five turns for the fleet unit. One, two, three. So he's out for a while. And that will be it for delays. So just to get a preview of next turn, let's see what we got coming in. So on the Russian front... We've got an Air Force. We've got these guys coming in for the Germans, but I don't know if they get an Air Force coming in. No, they don't. Uh, they don't have one coming in. And uh, that's uh, quite unfortunate uh, because the British do get two Air Forces coming in. And the Germans won't be able to maintain that beachhead. And they'll be cut off. They will be cut off. And they won't be able to sustain the invasion. So that could be the end of it. They could be the end of it. All right, they do get this Italian fleet back. The British get the Nelson back. A nice troop. Nice unit, let's say. And South Africans are back in the force pool. But this, uh, now the Russians, the Germans had nothing to stop the air power at the moment. This might help the Russians save Kiev if they can put an air unit on top of it. So I got all these air units. Um, this one here needs to combine with somebody, but he doesn't have anybody to combine with. The British, though, have this thing to combine. And so they can combine it. Not sure what, when I combine it, what happens. There's a guy down there in the, um, down there at Kuwait. I'll have to look up these combined rules. These two guys come in. Put them in Britain, I think. Makes sense. Maybe another one in the Middle East area. And, oh, all these. Where are these subs? I got subs coming out. But no sub command. Now these British units, okay, these here. Put one on the Eastern Front. Cheapo unit. Or actually, I'll, move, I'll put it. I'll put a couple of these in the in Baghdad, including that cheap unit, and these three will go back here against the British. Gotta see what to do about that. And this goes in the box for the Germans. So, hmm. Germans are going to wish they didn't play that uh, Blitz card, <laughs> I think. All right, hold on now. Let's see what we have to do about this British unit here. The reorganization happens during the reorganization phase. So we'll just go ahead and put it on the map up there for now. And then I can decide, do I want to uh, reorganize it and put it in Kuwait, or do I want to reorganize it and put it in the home base area and send a different air unit down there? So that's what's going on. Okay, so that will end the very exciting 
first turn of Operation Sea Lion. Results? Well, the invasion looks like it's going to flounder. I won't be able to support the beachhead. It will come off. They will be cut off from supply. And it's very likely that I'll try to play this mass surrender on there to uh, eliminate all of those units in one hex and take out and clear the beaches. And I think that will be the end of Sea Lion. I don't see the Germans trying to press that anymore. They might, but I think instead they'll try to work on controlling the North Atlantic and um, keeping the U.S. out of the war by having Gibraltar. Uh, it, it will force, if, as long as they keep a certain force over there, it will force Great Britain to maintain a decent garrison there. Uh, once the U.S. start filtering in, that won't be a problem either. So, uh, valiant effort by the Germans, but I think it's over. We'll find out for sure later. Uh, on the other hand, though, I do have seven uh, victory hexes. We have Oslo, Paris, Lisbon. That's three. Uh, we have, where else do we have? That's right, Athens. And... Cairo and Baghdad. Is there a seventh one? Yes, I forgot Brussels. Okay. The only two remaining Western ones that are available are Tehran, which the Russians look to be protecting for them, and uh, London. Uh, however, so that's seven, and on the Russian front, uh, there's... They're not going to get London, uh, and they're not going to get Tehran. So the Germans will be targeting two of these, and I think they'll be able to get them. They're here, 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 and here. However, mud is coming. And the chances are they'll only get one. And I can certainly invest and probably take Kiev. He's going to be able to put an air unit on it because I'm totally out of air assets. I depleted everything. The Luftwaffe has been shot down and gutted uh, this summer. Um, so hopefully they'll have a better performance next time. But I don't see myself trying to protect that bridgehead and keep pushing over there. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I really want to try to do that. Hmm. We'll have to see. We'll see how the things shake out, but it's not going to happen in fall, so we'll have to see what happens by spring. And I'm stuck for the next two turns, you know, with playing some mandatory German cards to get ready for the next uh, offensives. So uh, the Germans aren't in good position to be thinking about anything until next summer. So we'll see where everything is by then, but that's exactly when the USA starts coming in and the USCL level is up, and I'm probably gonna turn my focus over to Russia where I can get some more victory points for a Fortress Europa at plus three. That's not too bad. That can certainly work out well. Uh, so it's a good game so far. Thanks for listening to my diatribes and rants, and that's it. Thank you very much.